Hey everybody, Ed and I are in Arizona for our first time ever and we've been herping the last week finding rattlesnakes. But while we were filming those rattlesnakes for the video that just came out, we found a ton of other really interesting species of reptiles and amphibians and other critters that we would like to share with you in today's video. So today we're going to share with you some amazing flora and fauna that live here in Arizona. So this is a baby coach whip. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah. This is what baby coach whips look nah. like. Wow. You can see the slender head, big eyes. And of course, they don't really look like the adults, but one of the things that gives it away is of course the really slender build. See how slender this snake is. Yeah. All along its whole body, how fast it was. It was yeah, really booking. Yeah, it was booking. taken off. And then, do you see how it's patterned up towards the head and the neck, and the first part of the body, but then once it gets to the hind part and the tail, yeah, there's here. no wow. pattern. It just disappears, and you've got a solid tail. Wow really long tail too. They get very big, actually. They're always slender snakes, but... Six to eight? Wow. At least right around six, a little bit bigger than that. Okay. Good catch, by the way. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was zipping around pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he took off one way, changed his mind, came the other way, and wow. <laughs> this is like one of these colubrid species that people don't really pay a lot of attention to, but I think they're really cool. So there's some debate about these ones in captivity, right? Mm -hmm. Like some people don't think they make, because they're so active, they don't make a good pet snake, but then there's others that think they do. Yeah, so. they tend to be active and nervous. Okay. And they need a lot of space. Like yep. you said, not only are they a big snake, like a long snake, yep. they also require a lot of room because yeah. they cover a lot of ground. Just for that reason and the reason that they're very visually oriented, so they don't like a lot of disturbances. Okay. They're people moving past their cage a lot tends to make them nervous. Okay. And of course, they're not widely available yeah. as captive bred. I know there's so a few breeders. There's a few breeders, but it, it's not enough to where this is gonna be like a common snake. So a yeah. lot of them still come in as come wild, and that makes them, you know, they're nervous exactly, too that yeah. way. I suppose if you captive produce some, those might not make might not actually too bad. too bad. Yeah. So for pets. the ones I've seen are very red in color. Where oh did, yes. Where did those ones come from? Are so those those are it's just a variation in I mean there are red coach webs, but okay. these guys are quite variable in their coloration. Okay. And it especially kind of like with the sidewinders where the different color sands that oh, they that they okay. live in in the different areas those of the color of the soil. That yep. Color. Is that makes the sense. color that they We've are. Seen this and yeah. it's very much that color. Yeah. Okay, dude. Here you yeah, go. we should have. Nope, not that way. You weren't crossing that way. Go that way. There he goes. Oh, wow, that's a quick snake. Gecko! Here we have a banded gecko. Is this full size? Uh, they can get a little bit bigger than this, but... So they're kind of small. But basically full size. So I know of a pe couple people who breed like, I think Central American banded geckos. Yes. Does anyone breed deserts? Um, I'm sure people do. Unfortunately, these are one of these lizards that are kind of considered like almost a food lizard, you know? Uh, it's like, oh, because oh. you can go out and collect large numbers of these. So if you have snakes that eat lizards, this is a good species out here to, uh. so people, can breed them and they're they're easy to breed but they usually breed them for food oh, <laughs> so it's not for pets so it's one of even those... though they do well in captivity huh. they remind me of like a leopard gecko in their appearance they totally remind me of a leopard gecko they're like the leopard geckos of the desert out here yeah so can these regenerate tails yes okay i bet that coach would, would take this guy yeah exactly <laughs> that's exactly that little coach whip could probably handle this gecko without a problem all right, so we're gonna see if Emily can get bit by a tarantula. I don't want to get bit. I've never held a wild tarantula before, but apparently these ones are pretty friendly. <laughs> oh gosh, guys! If you don't know, I have had a fear of tarantulas when I was a kid, so I really want to work over it. Just tap right there. Oh, there you go. Pick up. Yeah. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Okay, 
Do you want to try a different one? Nope. I think he's calming down. I think we'll be okay. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> well, you just want to start talking while you're squatted down okay. like that? Okay. Okay. All right. Emily's very concentrated, by the way. Yes. Yes. What we have here is an Arizona blonde tarantula, also known as a desert tarantula. And this is the most common tarantula you will find in Arizona. And they are a, they're a decent size. This is my first wild tarantula I've ever held, which is why I'm paying so close attention to him. This one is about eight to 10 years old. It's the males that reach sexual maturity at about eight to 10 years that are on the prowl and you find on the roads because they are trying to find females to breed with. The females are hiding out by Ooh, their- We have a scorpion right here. There's a scorpion too? Yeah, right here. Oh, cool, there's even a scorpion? Nice. Right, I just saw him out of the corner of my eye. That's awesome though. Sorry, go back to sexual maturity and okay. females. Okay, so the females are hanging out right now by their quarter sized tunnels and uh, the males just have to go and find them, you know, typical. The males don't live as long as the females do. Once they reach maturity at about eight to 10 years old, they only live another year or two after that. Whereas the females can actually live upwards of 20 years or more. We are our scorpions on the move over there. Yeah. There he goes. Bye little scorpion. Cool. The desert tarantula can be sexed by the uh, presence of tibial spurs, which are small little spurs found on the front legs. So this one is a male. You can see those spurs on his front legs there. And the females just lack those, basically. So it's pretty easy to sex these guys. The desert tarantula's defense mechanism is to take its back legs and they actually kick off these hairs from their abdomen. These are called urticating hairs. And they are very irritating if they touch you or if they're embedded in you. So that's, that's what they do when they're scared. They flick them at you. You can actually tell how stressed a tarantula has been based on how many of its hairs it's missing from its abdomen. It, this goes for other tarantulas like kept in captivity too, but they after one shed will just grow them all back and start new. So when they feel threatened they will freeze and kind of stick their abdomen up in the air at you ready to go, kind of like a skunk raising its tail at you before it sprays. And this is a wild tarantula not uh... Yeah this one this one is wild. You will see in the bloopers me uh figuring out how to hold him. <laughs> All right, dude, we're gonna move you off the side of the road so you don't get squished. Do you wanna hold him? No, I'm good. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, go find the lady. <gasps> A wild Ed, you should you should boop it. You boop it. I'm not gonna boop it. It's actually kind of soft. What? Yeah, it's actually like if you don't like grab. Bogus. All right guys, we have our first amphibian of the trip. This is a Sonoran Desert Toad. He's very jumpy, so I'm gonna try <laughs> to hold him still. So can you sex these by the tympanums? No, the size of the tympanums don't are about the same size in both males and females. Okay. So okay. although it's true in some, it's not true for this one. How about these little things on their feet, can you sex them by those? So these are actually spurs that both sexes have to dig into the rough soils here in Arizona. So wow. you can see the soil here, or um, yeah. they actually you probably can't see, but the soil is very <laughs> gravelly here and very tough. But these guys can burrow down in using those uh, spurs. That's They're really awesome. big. Big toad. They yeah, they're really big toads. And this is not even as big as they get. They get even larger than this guy. Dude, and wow. he's kind of puffing up right now. Yeah. Right? Is this the toad that people lick, if I remember correctly? <laughs> this is the one that is, how shall we say, blamed for that. This is the oh, okay. toad that that uh, you have these um, parotid glands behind the eyes. You can see they're very pronounced and they look like little kidney beans. And this is where they exude their poison from. Now, it's a myth that you just lick the poison straight. Okay. There's some... <laughs> Some concoction you have to do with them that I won't go into here. <laughs> There's kids watching this. So. <laughs> right. But yes, this is the toad where all of those, really? um, yeah, where all of that comes from. Wow, that's cool. What a neat find. Yeah. Oh, we've got a sidewinder. Roar! He's got, he, oh, he's just in like, he's got thorns in him from a cactus. Oh, no wonder he's uh -oh. upset. I'd be upset too. Yeah. 
It's got at least three. Aw, sorry dude, you got into a cactus. Yeah, what are we doing here, Emily? So this guy has a few th cactus thorns in his body, which is, might be why he's so agitated. It probably doesn't help that there's people here, but we're trying to think of a way to remove these thorns, although we can't think of a good way to do it safely because we don't have tubes with us. So what Jeff's gonna try to do is just hold down one of the thorns to the ground with this hook and see if he can move and pull it out himself. So the thorns, all right, there, there. I can see two from here. Which so Emily if you probably... ever wonder, do snakes get stuck by cactus thorns in the desert? Yes, they do. Have your answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you might be able to get that. Get one, yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, got one. Hey, there's those two other ones. You guys have tubes? Nope. Okay. No tubes or anything <laughs> like a tube? Nope. So we have a sidewinder, but he's got some thorns in him. So we're trying to think of a way to... We got one of them out by Jeff just pinning it down with the hook and he pulled it out himself, but he's got a couple others. Do we have tape or anything? Or do, would you rather have a cup that you can sit on them? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we've got that. Yeah. Okay, so see there's there. one there okay, and so one there. Okay, so I'm gonna there. come back from back here. So okay, okay now the don't go in right away. What we're gonna yep, do let is- let me know when. Yeah, we're gonna see how he reacts to this first. Okay. So stay back. Oh, you reacted quite well. We Pretty good? well. I think we're good. There's one. One. Where's the other one? Oh, it's right there. It's oh, there. I see yep, it. yep. Got it. Got him. Is that all? Yeah, I think that's all of them. Now there was. We only saw three. So. Is there another one? Mm, I don't see any others. Okay, I'm gonna lift the top. Okay. All right. Success. Another, another good dude for the night. Yeah. Indeed. Pulls you both you both helped us. Yeah. Yes. We just pulled cactus thorns out of a sidewinder. That's right. <laughs> Not every day you can say something like that. No. no even for a herper. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another little banded gecko here. This one, however, has a regenerated tail. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. You got really close there. Nice. Look at that tail. Quite a bit shorter and fatter than the original. Looks like a perfect little tail though. Whoa, you guys are quick. That's my shoe. Quick little guys. Oh, he's climbing onto my shoe. Oh, really? Oh, yep, it went up. Oh, he's oh. on my shoe. Oh, well, hi. Aren't you just the cutest little thing? <laughs> oh, look yeah, at that. look, he's on my ankle. Aw. He like climbed right up. Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna, oh. what are we doing? Here, hand me the camera. He's like, I love you. <sighs> That's awesome. <laughs> I so, love you too. So here's Emily. <laughs> here's a wild banded gecko deciding to make friends with her. Just crawling up my leg. He's like, oh, you make such a comfy perch. <laughs> what, what are we doing here? Oh, no, <laughs> oh, jeez. He's like, oh. You just keep going and going, yeah. 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 I'm not really sure what to do at this point. What are you gonna do, Emily? Um, how can I safely get you off of, can, come here. It's like, I don't want to do that. There you go. There. Look at that, just exploring. Charismatic okay. banded gecko. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I really like these guys. There you go, you made friends with the banded gecko. I sure did. Oh, he is <laughs> tiny. So this, guys, is a night snake. They are a smaller species of snake, but I don't know much about them either. So do you mind <laughs> teaching us about night snakes, Jeff? So night snakes, so they are, uh, they have enlarged rear teeth. They can use those to mildly envenomate their prey. Oh. So the rear fanged so venomous. So they're rear fanged venomous. They're little lizard eaters. Okay. They wow, like to, very little. To okay. eat little lizards. And this one, of course, is a, this is a small one. They can get right around two feet or so, through between two, yeah. two and a half. So yeah, smaller species, but not as small as some other ones around here. Right. Oh, I've got those, yep, elliptical pupils. Yep, these guys have the elliptical pupils. Kind of like a wedge-shaped face. Yeah. Are they always like super glossy looking yes, like that? Yes, okay. they are. So they're eating things like the banded geckos here, aren't they? They're eating things like banded geckos. They actually also eat small uh, things like centipedes and stuff like that too. Okay. So okay. They're, they are they are little invertebrate eaters too. Yeah, this guy is so little. For size reference, that's a quarter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've got another toad, guys. Ugh, 
I don't know what kind this one is though. <laughs> what is this? This one is a couch's spade foot toad. Couch or actually, is like, couch's like, spade foot. Like the furniture? Um, like the furniture, but not named after the furniture. It's actually named after somebody named Couch. Oh, so it's Couch apostrophe S. Correct. Not couches. Okay, that makes sense. He's like, he, they're wearing gloves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really wow. light. Their bellies are really light. So why are they called spade foots? Okay, so it's because these guys actually have little spades on their hind feet. So like they have little shovels on their yep, back. Yep, they have little shovels. See that, that black thing, that's their spade. Whoa, oh my gosh, I thought that was a piece oh, of dirt. Sorry. Nope, nope, that's, what? That, that is actually the spade and you can actually see oh it's- Oh my gosh, it's hardened, it's yeah. like a nail. It is, it is, it's very much like a nail, it's keratinized, so uh, it's very much like a like a, a, a spade uh. that they use to just dig themselves down right into this uh, uh, soil here. That is cool. crazy. Yeah, it's really and cool. I'm sure, okay, let's look yep. on the other side. Let's look on the other side, there you can is. see there. there's one there too. Wow. Yep. That is and it, awesome. and it actually projects out from the foot a little bit yeah. to kind of to kind of move that soil out of the way when they do their back leg shuffle. Wow. That's cool. I've never seen something, a structure like that yeah. on, a, on an amphibian. The other thing that's cool about these amphibians too is that they have elliptical pupils. Oh my gosh, do they? Oh my gosh, they do. Yes. So they are nocturnal species? They are nocturnal species and also they're found out here during like rainy weather like it is right now. Yeah. Um, so otherwise they spend a lot of time underground. Okay. Wow. Cool. It's kind of an underrated little toad, isn't it? I know, yeah. So here we have a pretty close cousin to the bull snakes that we keep at home. This is a Sonoran gopher snake, albeit a very thin one. He was pretty dehydrated, or is pretty dehydrated, so we actually gave him a bit of water, which he drank up instantly. So now I'm trying to hold his head up so that he doesn't like spit it back out. But this just goes to show how tough life can be living in Arizona where there isn't water. <laughs> Available all the time. Another gopher? That is cool. Yeah, oh, guy. wow. He was striking. Other than a little bit longer face, that looks like a bull snake to me. It looks just like the babies we hatched. Yeah. This one looks good, too. I'm really happy. Yeah, he's in really good shape. Ha! Ah, there's another one. Yeah, do you think a clutch just hatched? Wow. Yeah, it's got that baby sheen. Like, that's before its first shed sheen. That is awesome. What are the odds that there'd be a nest nearby and we get to see all these little babies? Siblings, we brought you back together. You just it's hatched. Like a hatching video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> man, they're so cute. I like the the pink on their heads. Man, that was a really cool find. All right, well, they were both crossing in this direction, so we're gonna let them go on this side of the road. We tried to scan the rest of the the area, couldn't find any more siblings, but man, we found two. Go grow up. Come on, guys. They have that baby sheen. Like, they yeah, haven't shed they have yet. They have baby sheen. Yeah. yeah. They're, baby sheen. they're just new. They're yeah. just new. I, they smelled like eggs hatching when we do eggs hatching. Goodbye. We found a cool bug, guys. Check out this thing. This is a mesquite bug. I am told don't bite. I am taking his word on it and hoping that this, I'm trusting you, don't bite. But these, I guess, eat the leaves of the mesquite tree, which is ironically where we found this bug was on this mesquite tree. And it seems like they really like the bean pods. I mean, look at this. There's a few right up there. These are huge bugs. They make a ton of noise when they fly too. You can hear them from like a mile away. So that is really cool. He's actually, look, it, He's shiny, did you see that? Yeah. He's like shiny on his wings. I really like the little dots on his antenna. Yeah, I wonder what those do. Yeah. Cool bug though. So I'm excited, because I caught this one. He's, he's a spiny lizard, but that's mm -hmm. all I know about him. So Jeff is here again. <laughs> okay, so this is a young spiny lizard, and it's unusual because we're finding this guy out at night. Um, normally these are a daytime critter, um, but it was, uh, it's been raining and it's kind of dropped the temperatures a little bit here, so it's nightfall and he's been zooming around on the road. But these guys are pretty much uh, uh, insect eaters, small invertebrates, they just chase down and, and eat them up. And um, there's a variety of spiny lizards that can be found out here. And this one you can see has a collar right behind the head um, which will help identify him and as you can see they called spiny lizards because they have these overlapping scales that are pointed and kind of lay like shingles like on the top of a house and that's why they're called spiny lizards and also their tail too is very very spiny so if you go down the tail you know it's 
kind of smooth, but you yeah. can't go back up the tail without catching the spines of the scales. So the only reason why we were able to catch him was because he was having a tough time getting up over this curb. So I think we're gonna do him a little favor and let him go over here. Cause that's where he wanted to go. Okay, bud, here you go. We're done with you, you're free. It's okay, there you go. Run, little dude, you're free. Well, we're back at the cave, and that was awesome! What a cool trip to Arizona! We will definitely be back. Thank you everyone for watching today's video, and thank you to our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which species featured in today's video was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Calmly walk on over. He keeps going Just over! Just get him. Get him right now. Have him slow down. Yeah. No. Oh. There you go. There you go. He's walking normally now. There. Uh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> We're gonna be friends. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Just calm down. It's all right. Oop. Oh, sorry. You don't have a good grip at all. Oh, the bloopers on this one. <laughs> well, you just want to start talking while you're squatted down okay. like that? Okay, okay. All right, Emily's very concentrated, by the way. Yes, yes. I'm watching, I'm trying to watch his every move so I don't freak him out, so that he doesn't freak me out. Some concoction you have to do with them that I won't go into here. <laughs> uh, you right. can tell us later. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Turn that down a little bit. Uh, dude, yeah, uh, dude, uh, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> oh, yep. yeah. oh, well, like you said, catch. you like you. Can you imagine being a reptile like this? Oh, three giants just like swarmed me, flashed me, shined lights on me, and then left. <laughs> it was the weirdest experience yeah. ever. Somehow I lived. I was oh. so hoping we were gonna find one. I don't know. What did you see? I had a squished grasshopper. You found a squished, good job. That's know, almost as cool as the banded gecko squish, right here. This grasshopper. Super loud, dude, that car. Yeah, that car is really loud. Okay, now boop it. Uh, ow. <laughs> None of that was in focus. <laughs>